Hello YouTube, so I'm going to do a quick video here. I'm going to be doing an overnight trip at a state forest near my house, so I'm going to test out. I've never been backpacking before, and it's kind of interesting to me. I watch all of Nut and Fancy's videos, and it just made me interested, so I thought I would go ahead and try some out. So I'm leaving shortly for the trip, and most of the stuff that I have here is stuff I'm going to bring with me. I'm just going to do an overview. This is just my beginner stuff and so I'll get some experience and see how some of the stuff works. So I thought I'd just show off some of this stuff and uh, quickly describe what I'm bringing and why. First off, we're going to go with fire. Um, this is a sealed match case. Got lots of Strike Anywhere matches inside there. And it's waterproof so it'll keep water out. Then in this bag here I got a space blanket as an extra measure of staying warm if I have to. Then inside the space blanket is the match box with the um, sandpaper on it, so I can light the matches easier. A pair of binoculars will come with me. These are Barsk binoculars, so pretty nice. Knives, got a little collection of knives with me. Um, fixed blade hunting knife. This is not really a Leatherman. It's actually just a cheap Chinese knockoff of one, but I don't have an actual Leatherman right now, so it'll have to do. Whistle. You always have a whistle with you because it'll carry further than your voice if you get lost and the search party's looking for you. Reflective belt for the same reason, so you can be seen at night if you have to. Um, right here, this is a Glock 9mm pistol. I'll bring that with me. Not really much to say about that. If you're already familiar with guns, you'll know everything about that spare magazine. Then over here, I got a few extra sets of socks a knit hat for staying warm, some long johns, and a moisture wicking t-shirt, then water. And then over here is going to be all my food. Um, I got here just a long piece of summer sausage. That'll be good. It'll go good with eggs, which I got in here. I got a few eggs that are chickens laid. Um, and multi-spice. This is actually pretty nice here because uh, it has like six different stuff. It's got like cayenne, salt, pepper, and uh, vidi and uh, garlic salt. And then Snickers bars. That's my emergency food store. See, I'm a real health nut here. <laughs> Snickers bars for that and then some cherry pies. So, anyway, that's all my stuff for the backpacking trip. Oh yeah, and I got some wax balls here for helping start a fire. So I'll do a couple more videos as I do the hike. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll keep you all updated. Well, I'm now on the way to the state forest. So after lots of delays and lots of aggravation, finally out on the way. I think you might be able to see the mountain I'll be at in just here a second. I'm on the highway, as you can see. Anyway, it'll probably be dark by the time I get to the campsite, but that's okay. A little darkness never hurt anyone, so um, I will give you another report when I'm up there. Take a look here at these. You can probably see them in the camera, these hills up here that you see kind of on the edge of the background. That's green and gold mountains. So you can see they're not really tall mountains. You know, not really a mountain mountain, but just really big hills. That's the highest point in Kitsap County where I live. So anyway, that's where I'll be heading and I'll probably be there at the parking lot in about 20 minutes or so. And then you'll get another update about my camp situation when I arrive. Coco, of course, can hardly wait to get out of the car and be done. By the way, if you're wondering where those cute cars up there on the street, the reason why they're out there on the street and not in the parking lot is because the state decided to start charging you to park in the parking lot with these yellow passes here. But there's no law against parking on the side of the street, so now the state's charging everyone for the parking lot, everyone just parks on the side of the road instead of the street. Go figure. Huh. Go figure how that works. So, now it looks like there's going to be a lot of people here. 
it's kind of in the evening so people might be going home but I'm gonna be here for the night so but I like all this presence here because if there's all the horse riders here in the cars it means people are less likely to break into my car or stuff like that so anyway so we're about ready to get situated up and head on out so I guess I will I guess I will provide another uh, update when I'm actually at the campsite. It's going to take me a little bit to get to the campsite. I have to go up the mountain with this heavy pack I have on. So, uh, yeah, so probably in two or three hours. It might not even be light. It might be dark by the time that I get to that. So, anyway, but I will get back on when I'm at the campsite and do another video update. Well, I'm about three quarters of the way to the campsite now. I'm taking a rest here. These are some electrical wires up here that are actually used to run power up to some TV stations. I think you can barely see them across the sky. But yeah, I'm otherwise a pretty remote part of Green Mountain. Over there, if you can kind of see them against the skyline are the Olympic Mountains across the Hood Canal. Well, I've been making pretty good time. It's been about a mile and I've done it in like 20 minutes, which is pretty good for going uphill and the whole deal. Coco, as usual, is pretty thrilled. Are you thrilled, Coco? Coco, look over here. Come here, Coco. Yeah, she's not really that happy that she got pulled out on a cold night to <coughs> be a mountain dog, but, you know, it's good for her. Anyway, so I'm most of the way there, so I'll come back when I'm on the uh, campground. <laughs> 